What is up, MFers? Welcome to the month of November. I'm a little bit stuffed up. Got mucus in my face because it's cold outside. I'm sick and hey, the bass are finally going to be ready to bite. November is one of my favorite months of the year to not only go catch numbers, but to catch giant bass and you guys can too. We're going to show you three different styles of lakes. It's, I think it's going to cover the majority of the country during the month of November. Show you the exact baits and tell you exactly how to fish them so you guys can go kick some ass. You're not up in the dumb tree stand. You are actually out on the water where you should be, not like coleslaw back there. And uh, yeah, November can be a great month to fish. Let's dive into so it. So let's talk about what's going on in the month of November. We are a little bit in a transitional time down here in the deep south here in southern Texas. So a lot of what's happened throughout the country in September and really in October is finally happening down here now. We've had water temperatures in the 80s and really nothing's happened really crazy with the weather until the last couple days. And so we're finally going to have the water temperatures cool down. We're going to have those fish and bait fish really start to make a lot of those transitions. But throughout most of the country, I feel like a lot of the transition period has already happened. Whether you be in a highland type area in the Ozarks, or you're in the, uh, the East Coast in a lot of those highland style reservoirs, uh, or even up in the North where a lot of these fish and a lot of these man-made lakes and then up into the natural lakes are already like well into their fall feeding periods and doing their fall thing. And so I'm gonna go through, like I said, three different styles of lakes and how you can catch fish at those bodies of water right now. So first one I'm gonna talk you through is going to be the Highland style, Ozark style um, body of water where you got multiple different types of shad and you have all different types of natural fingers. You have, you know, main lake points, secondary points, just a traditional Highland style reservoir. And you guys have seen me have a lot of success in these places uh, on baits that are looking like this. This is what I'm looking for um, to throw first off. If I got any type of water clarity over two feet, I'm throwing one of these little shad short style glide baits in those bodies of water. And really, you know, you don't need to listen to what everyone says about, oh, they're on secondary points or they're in the back of the creeks this time of year, they're on main lake. You throw them wherever you feel like you can get bit but what I really like to do in November, especially the cleaner the water, is to chase wind. So if you're in any type of natural rocky body of water, you can really do this all year round, but I find where the wind is hitting it directly, and this might change throughout the day, but you find those secondary points, those main lake points, those main lake rock transition areas where the wind is blowing directly on it, and that is where you can have the most success on this style of bait, you can have giant fish that will pull up just throughout the day. They'll pull right up there and use it as a little feeding platform on one of those points on a shelf rock, like a chunky rock. It's what Zark and I did at Bull Shoals and that, uh, that, that Bass Pro Shops Championship a couple years ago. And it's just what happens in those Highland style, rocky style lakes year round. Another option for those style lakes is to crank it up. These are two baits that I keep on my deck at all times during those highland style, rocky style fisheries uh, to crank. And two different scenarios that I really like to look for. If you find those windblown areas with a little bit too much stain to throw those chopper style glides, this guy is such a badass crankbait. It's my favorite one. You Bet your ass I'll have one or two maybe tied on for the classic at Grand Lake. But this is the brown eye special color of the Six Sense Flat 75 crankbait. Dives four to six feet, um, depending on your line size. I like to throw it on like 15 pound line and just parallel banks where the wind is blowing. Uh, or even if the wind is not blowing, uh, you can cover a lot of water with this thing just in high percentage rock areas where you feel like the fish could be um, or they could pull up once the wind starts pulling on those, those chunkier rock banks, but a little bit too much color uh, to throw those glide baits. You feel like, you know, less than two foot of visibility or if the wind really gets it stirred up, but you know the fish are still gonna be up there actively feeding, boom, flat 75 brown eye special. I think it's a freaking killer. And if you wanna fish a little bit deeper, um, you can't get them to commit and you really feel like they're on the bottom more so uh, than want to come up and actually eat that gliding style bait. But you stuff some cleaner water. This is a great, great bait too. This is the Curve 
uh, 55 from six cents. It's a kind of like the old school wiggle wart style bait because it has a tighter wiggle to it. it has a really cool um, kind of a lower pitch rumbly rattle in it that I think is just awesome. And it comes in some incredible colors, see-through you know, greens, see-through browns, different type of opaque craw colors, just a deadly, deadly bait that runs a little bit deeper than the flat 75. And don't get me wrong, you can catch them in the two, three, four foot visibility on this too. But once it gets up in that, that cleaner type of water, I like to fish a little bit deeper and a little bit more natural colors. So that's when I pick up this, uh, this curve. So the next style of lake is going to be one that um, is near and dear to my heart because it's what I came from in Nebraska and that is more of the man-made mud bottom style lake that have not a lot of good habitat in them, but the bass, they seem to always go to one certain style of, of, of habitat during this time of year in November. And I see a lot of the same similarities down here in Texas as well when you have bodies of water that are mostly mud bottom predominantly, and they have just a little bit of hard rock. And some of it's natural rock, some of it's man-made rock, but for the most part, man-made riprap or a mud bottom lake. It seems like there is one structure that they, they really, really like to go to, and that is flatter points, like the, the, the most predominant main lake points where it's as flat as possible. You don't want a sharp drop off and it's just a little tiny point that comes up. The sharp drops can be good off the sides, but you want as big of a flat point as possible. And what I think and what I know happens on those style of points is the gizzard shad, and I think bluegill do it too, for whatever reason, they get up on these points when the water gets down in the 40s and 50s and they they're just they're moving around and blast around these points and i think that the 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 colder water has a more lethargic it's just a place you can catch some absolute freaking giants you're gonna see me throw this bait this uh hangover lying through from six cents the next couple months really all through the winter down here in texas louisiana oklahoma um, might even make some some trips further further east than that but this is something that will play all winter long if you're down in texas but it will play right now in a lot of the united states as well throwing this guy around those areas if you have live scope you'll see a lot of little dots there on the screen that are in bunches of like three to eight fish those are those gizzard shad that are like you know eight inches to a pound and man they, this is the time of year when they really really eat them well but if you're up in the north and you don't feel like you can get bit on this, maybe the fish are moving a little bit too slow. I know you can get bit on this thing. You, you definitely could. But another way I really like to target them is with the old traditional jig. I've had so many great days dragging these jigs uh, with a cross style, flappy style trailer. And I really like the, uh, the, the hybrid jig from Six Sense because it's got that head that's gonna allow it to not only stand up and be flat, um, when you're fishing it around harder bottom areas on some of the drop-offs of those flat points. But also it's going to, if you come up to a lay down that's down there, or you just want to fish a brush pile that's on the edge of one of those areas, it's going to get through that brush as well. I've caught fish with the water in the mid to high 30s on this jig. But when that happens, I'm thinking in my mind straight up like, it's damn near ice fishing season. These bass are to the point where they're not going to want a giant profile. So I will take this bait, I'll trim it, way down. I'll trim it all the way down to the hook. So now we have this big heavy jig, three quarter ounce jig. I'll take some off the, the weed guard there. And we're going to make this thing just as small as we can possibly get away with. We're going to finesse cut the, the skirt up here, which I like to do a lot of time of the year. I don't cut it all off. I like to kind of have it tapered a little bit. And like I said, this is something you can do all year whenever the bite gets tough to get you guys a few more bites is to just give them a little bit different, a little bit smaller profile. And then I like to kind of go where the skirt is kind of the thickest and we'll just straight up pull a couple of those strands out in those areas. We basically got like a little spider jig, but we have the heaviness of that big head and we still got that meaty hook too that's gonna let us drive that hook home uh, with a fish and a brush pile. Same thing with the stroke across trailer. I'm not gonna cut this thing down and then put a big trailer on the back of it. We're gonna get this thing as short as possible to where the hook shank is coming out of the front of it, which is gonna be about there. So I'll line it up. I'll see where it's gonna line up uh, with the back of it, then I'll trim it. We'll trim it right behind this little, are these cephalopods? 
Crustacean, they're crustaceans, Jesus. obviously. <laughs> Jesus, I mean, even, oh, it's like a, it's like a squid. This is a squid, but God, maybe we don't put that in the video. <laughs> so we'll stab him all the way through there, and look at that. We got ourselves a nasty little guy. It's still a nice, chunky, meaty meal for a big old slonchosaurus, but you made this big long profile jig into a little fat guy and uh that smaller profile is absolutely deadly as the water gets super super cold what i think a little fat guy is also called a chode yeah you done created yourself chew okay one more thing in that style body of water that's super important and that is finding vertical man-made cover or standing timber so I know that's two totally different things, but in the lakes that have the man-made jetties, we would always just go and absolutely tear them up on this bait right here, the provoked jerk bait, especially this guy, the, the steeper drop-off ones. I like the, the deeper diver. We brought this back actually. This was a great bait forever, but people just didn't buy it that well. So it got discontinued like five, six years ago the 106 DD. Uh, we brought it back last year and it's just been a hit ever since because so many people were asking for it. I had a couple left over that are old and decrepit boys that I still got in the box, but this thing dives a little bit steeper diving angles. So it, it stays on those fish really, really well. But once again, wind blowing into these man-made jetties is absolutely awesome. And then if you are on a body of water that has these flatter points like we were just talking about and there's some standing timber mixed in, a lot of times those fish will get on those flat points and suspend in the standing timber. So that's when you uh, can absolutely pick them apart with these provoked jerk baits. So do not forget about these. The jerk bait is way more in play now. I mean, I used it all summer. You saw me use it in the, the opens in these midsummer tournaments with the water 90 degrees, but it's still to me a cold water bait. That's when it's the best and uh, it has come back around and it is time for the jerk bait once again. Okay, one last style of lake I wanna talk about. That is if you are lucky enough, whether you're in one of the Northern lakes that, um, that has a lot of the natural grass uh, or if you're in the South down here where the water is still gonna be in the 60s at least and you still have a lot of that great hydrilla milfoil leftover um man you can't go wrong with these two styles of baits right here now this isn't for the northern guys because you're not going to go out with the top water and start smacking them uh with the water 35 degrees but southern lakes as those fish get into the grass in the fall they're going to follow those little thread fin shad and we look for drains is what everyone down here in texas calls them so basically a drain is going to be any type of depression that is not caused by a creek, a big major creek with creek channel turns and stuff running into the lake. This is just a depression where the fish can just use it to ambush and the sides of these depressions will have grass all the way back to them. Sometimes, you know, they'll, they'll curve just like a creek channel or something, but it's not a defined creek channel. It's just a low spot. If you can find drains, especially with some wind blowing into them, the big bass especially will absolutely destroy a walking style topwater bay. This is the, the catwalk. It's one of my favorites. Um, loud knocker and it stays really, really horizontal in the water. So it walks from the first twitch. Look for those style uh, of areas, I guess, if you have grass still left in your lake. Follow those shad movements. I would get on your side imaging, on your down imaging and just find areas that are going to have greater concentrations of shad. And then once you're in those areas, look for the sweet spots, which are those drains, especially the ones with the wind blowing into them. And uh, this guy can get ripped. Now, if you're in a, the same type of body of water or a colder body of water, this isn't something that's rocket science to anyone because it seems like this is all anyone throws these days, but, um, Pick up a bladed jig. This has been our favorite trailer. You saw me and Zark freaking crush them, mostly Zark, on the uh, the little juggle trailer right here. It has a really, really subtle action down there, but the same types of areas, but if it's colder water or the fish won't come up and commit to that top water, just slowly wind this thing and pulse it through the, the hydrilla. Some days you, you'll need to yo-yo it a little bit, just see what the fish want, but same type of deal. Wind blown's better. Uh, drains that have bait in them are always better 
and this guy will load the boat for you, especially if the water is not crazy, crazy cold quite yet to the point where you need to throw something that's a suspending style bait. Well, that's it guys. Hopefully you learned something. Uh, let me know in the comment section down below what your favorite bait is to throw during the month of November. And I really hope that you're able to take some of these tips and go out and catch really good fish at a time of the year when not many people are out there on the water. That's one of my favorite things about the fall. And um, yeah, I'm excited to kind of take you guys along with us because I'm going to start ripping some giants too in the off season here. Thanks for watching this one, OMFers. I'm out of here. Peace.